too much last time, so I'll try to go through this quickly. All right, so um, my career path, very briefly, I was an undergraduate at UCLA. I had initially thought about um, eventually going to medical school, but then I did some, some research in um, a neuroscience lab and then an organic chemistry research lab and uh, really liked that path instead. I ended up majoring in biochemistry and um, after graduation, I got a job doing medicinal chemistry at a small biotech company, which really appealed to me to um, you know, do some research that was focused on you know, hopefully helping people uh, you know, cure cancer, all of those uh, very lofty goals. But I really enjoyed that, and I had a vision of going to graduate school to get an advanced degree, um, return to the pharmaceutical industry, and then maybe move up into a management position. Um, before heading off to graduate school, I took one year off kind of completely. I worked as a snowboard instructor. And I, I'm a huge fan of taking, I guess, what the English call a gap year. Um, you know, maybe doing something with a little bit more benefit to society is what I'd recommend to my kids. But this worked for me. It was great. It was a lot of fun. And then I headed to New York City, to Columbia University, to um, get my PhD. I was there for six years, which is a little bit longer than than normal at that time, because I was in two different research groups. I switched about halfway through for a variety of reasons, um, but it ended up working out really well. I finished with, um, you know, in a great group with a great advisor who was extremely supportive of me and, and my career goals. Um, I was still thinking I was going to head to the pharmaceutical industry, so I needed to beef up on organic synthesis, so I got a postdoc at the University of Pennsylvania. Um, trying to synthesize a complex natural product. And that was really where I realized that, you know, I'd been doing research for about 10 years at that point, and it wasn't necessarily my, my passion anymore. I, find, I found the research I was doing a little bit narrow and solitary and, and definitely frustrating. And at that point, I really undertook a big project to do a lot of this career exploration that you read about in books. You know, I did self-assessments, and, and then I moved on to, to informational interviewing. I talked with a lot of people in different fields and just started figuring out what I could do outside the lab. Um, and I ended up applying for and getting this position with the American Chemical Society. Um, I've been the managing editor of JAX for five years now, and I love it. So I'll tell you a little bit more about that. So what appeals to me about my job is that I have this exposure to a wide range of excellent chemistry, and I don't have to be doing any lab work myself. Um, so <laughs> that's a lot of fun. I'm definitely involved with chemical research at a different level since I'm no longer in the lab. Um, you know, but scientific publication definitely still keeps me abreast of what's happening in the world of chemistry. I feel like I'm making a valuable contribution to the chemistry community, um, which is important to me. And I mentioned that in my postdoc, I, I was a little bit frustrated with kind of the repetitious work. What I do now, I do a lot of different things on a day-to-day -day basis, and that really keeps me engaged and interested. And um, so that's been a good fit for me. And I'm able to be creative in new ways, um, some of which you've heard about today in terms of the new technology that we're trying to develop, um, testing out new features on the website, um, and all those sorts of things. So um, I definitely really like what I do on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, some of what I do is very um, you know, operations focused. I correspond with authors, readers, editors, and answer their questions about um, journal policy, prior publication, all those sorts of things, some of which we discussed today. Um, I look at a lot of the manuscripts that are submitted prior to peer review, and some of what I do is decide, based on the subject area, which associate editor is appropriate to handle the review process. Um, I help out. We have an office staff, and you know we try to be as efficient as pos possible to move the manuscripts through as quickly as we can. Um, and I help with um, you know trying to figure out how to best do that. I attend meetings for the journal for ACS publications like this one, um, and and ACS national meetings, traveling about once a month, which again has been a good fit for me. Um, apart from the operations aspect of my job, some of what I do is journal strategy and trying to, to make sure the journal is the best that can be, monitor what competitors are doing and figure out, not just myself, but together with the editor and my coworkers at the ACS, where the journal should be or wants to be in two and five and ten years and then make sure we're making progress to get there. And, and some of that strategy, 
as I mentioned, involves developing new features for the journal and the website. <coughs> so for my job, sorry, it's got truncated a bit oddly, um, I need to have just a fairly broad um, interest in chemistry. Um, written and oral communication skills are important because a lot of what I do is um, talking to, um, or mainly emailing with authors and readers. And because I handle a lot of different projects, I need to be pretty good at managing my time and, and organizing a bunch of different projects at once. Something that, that wouldn't really be a good fit for what I'm doing is you know, somebody who really has an interest in um, you know, one area of chemistry and, and wants to read that manuscript in great detail, figure out exactly what's going on, and are these the best experiments that should have been done? And I just don't have the time to do that with 40 submissions coming in every day. Um, you know, somebody who isn't interested in dealing with people and isn't able to make kind of a lot of decisions on the fly probably wouldn't be very successful in this position. Um, in terms of my my life, I usually work, you know, nine or ten hours a day, maybe ten. Ten isn't that common. I usually don't take a lunch break. I work hard while I'm at work. Um, you know, sometimes if I don't get my nine to ten hours in, I'll, I'll do a few hours at night, but that's not super common, you know, I mean, I, I definitely don't feel like I'm chained to my desk at all. I have two young kids, and, and we do lots of fun stuff on the evenings and on weekends, um, and the travel schedule is definitely manageable, and a lot of times it's to nice places, like Houston, I've never been here before, and this has been great. Um, my husband is also a PhD chemist, and we have, you know, not specifically taken turns, but so far we moved once for my job and once for his job, and, and you know, we just try to, to work things out so that everybody's getting what they need. Um, in terms of resources, of finding positions, if you're interested in jobs in scientific publishing, um, there is the Society for Scholarly Publishing that's not only scientific, but um, that might be a good place to look for some leads. Um, the ACS has more positions like mine and um, you know, those are advertised on the career site that Sarah was talking about. And there are other scientific publishers as well who um, employ PhD chemists to, to do various things. Um, and there are other, um, you know, other positions in addition to just exactly what I'm doing. In terms of ACS membership, I think that um, being a member of ACS has been very valuable to me. Um, so ACS employees are not required to be ACS members, nor do we get free ACS membership. So I make a choice to be an ACS member, and um, I feel like I get a lot of the benefits, some of which Sarah described that I used during my job search, or even just as a graduate student before I was really looking for a job. You know, I did the, the uh, mock interviews and the resume reviews and um, the, the job searching at national meetings. I met with career consultants. And, and that's really helpful. There are the, um, the job listings on the web. Um, you know, there's chemical and engineering news. My position, I actually applied for it because it was advertised in c and &E News. Um, so that's a good place to look for jobs, I think. Um, and see, so yeah, I think that's my last slide. I think that was all that I had to say, and I'd be happy to answer questions at the end or um, you know, afterward if you have any. And feel free to contact me if you have any questions. I think my cards are up there as well. Yeah, somebody does have one. cards on the table. Um, so does John. I'm sure Alveda has some with her somewhere. And, and Roxy is our local chemistry teacher, so she might not have cards. I actually do have cards, but Ooh, I'm okay. bringing <laughs> But she can, I'm sure. Um, also, if you have your program, everybody's contact information is in the program, along with a bio and email address that they gave us for you to specifically.